Hello again and welcome to another Warlord Wednesday, the episode of the week where we talk about all things bolt action. And today guys, I'm starting a new series which is the starter set review. Now what I'm going to be doing with this series is I'm going to be taking a look at all of the starter sets that Warlord Games does for bolt action and I'm going to be saying whether I think they're a good deal, a bad deal or if there's a better option out there. So this is going to be quite a long running series, I'm going to be doing it for all of the different factions that I can find for bolt action. So hopefully it's something that you guys will find useful. Now the inspiration this series actually came from a comment on my last video where I talked about the gentleman's war and someone said this was really really helpful could you do something similar for all of the other starter armies that Warlord Games does and I thought you know what that's an absolutely fantastic idea so that's what we're going to be doing going forward and hopefully like I said people will find this very very useful so without further ado let's dive straight into this and we're going to be taking a look at the Blitzkrieg German starter army. Now it should be fairly obvious, but this is a starter army for the German faction of Bolt Action, okay? And it will allow you to build an early war force. So when you're thinking of early war, you wanna think fall of France, invasion of Poland, that kind of thing. That's the time frame that we're gonna be looking at here. Now we're gonna come back to that early war aspect of the start set, but some of the positives of this is that you're gonna get some quite unique and cool looking models. You know, this is not gonna be like the German Grenadier start set where everyone's wearing like camo schmocks and stuff like that no this is very much going to feel like the hollywood germans the classic germans with the big jack boots and the, all that kind of cool stuff so that is certainly the vibe you're going to get from these models now the blitzkrieg infantry are actually quite good in terms of model quality they're not an early early warlord kit several of the models do have the guns molded into the hands which is a really big positive but also several of them do come with uh, rifles and stuff separate to the hand. So I actually quite like this because it means that you get some of the easy build guys, but you also get some really good customization options as well. So the plastic inventory are quite good and you get a decent amount of them. 36 is enough to start your army, but you're probably gonna find that you'll need to buy another box of infantry on top of that. Now, speaking of the war machines, interestingly, this is one of the few kits that Warlord sells, the few star armies that they sell that don't doesn't have an MMG team in it. Now, for those of you maybe looking at this as your first army, you're not sure about the lingo, MMG stands for medium machine gun. And it's a pretty classic weapon option that you find a lot of bot action start armies and just armies on the tabletop. It's a nice medium machine, it's a nice sort of fire support kind of unit. However, a lot of people would say that not having the MMG in this kit is actually an advantage because a lot of people feel like MMGs, the rules for them in bot action aren't that great. And some people feel like Warlord pads out a lot of their box sets and stuff with the medium machine gun teams. I don't think that's necessarily true. I quite like a good medium machine gun. It just depends on your personal preference. But for Germans, I certainly like them because Germans get better medium machine guns than everyone else. It's a bit of a weird choice not to include a medium machine gun team, especially in a German Star Army. And I have to say for me personally, I think that's a little bit of a negative with this starter set, okay? However, the other weapon teams that you do get is the medium mortar, which is absolutely fantastic. I personally never leave home without a medium mortar. They're really, really good. And I also think that the inclusion of the light artillery piece as well is really really strong. I am a big believer, me personally, and your mileage may vary, I'm a big believer in light artillery. I think it performs really well against lots of different targets. It's good at taking out veteran infantry. It can put pins on even up to medium vehicles. It's just a really nice little piece of kit. So I think that this is a sh the weapon teams in this kit are really, really strong. Now, going to the vehicle part of the kit, we've got the Panzer IV and we've got the 251 Hanamag. Now the Panzer IV is a really strong inclusion in the starter set and Warlord Games knows how good the Panzer IV is because they include it in a lot of their starter sets, okay? It is the quintessential tank for your German army and it can be used right from the early war all the way through to the late war. Now, unless this is some sort of special kit that I'm not aware of, I can guarantee you that this Panzer IV it can be built as an early war variant, but it will come with all of the other bits to allow you to build as a late war variant. So what's kind of cool about that is it means you're not stuck with having to build your Blitzkrieg German army as an early war force. You can actually include some late war things like a, a Panzer IV with a big anti-tank gun on it, which is fantastic. Now, the next unit is the Hanamag, and that is another strong choice for this army. 
I quite like transports. I think transports are a really in good tactical inclusion for any army. And the fact that this starter set comes with one is a big bonus in my eyes. There are some starter sets that don't come with a transport, and I do find that to be a disadvantage. A lot of people don't think much about transports. They don't think that trucks or transports or anything like that are very useful. But trust me, guys, once you start using them, you won't go back. So for me, I think that's another strong inclusion. However, a lot of people would argue that the basic truck is much more points efficient than your Hannah Mag, than your 251, than your half track. And I would agree with that. So whilst it's good that it's got a transport in it, I would say that a truck, a base truck is actually better in many ways, but it's still nice for it to have that transport inclusion. Now, before we go any further, I just want to loop back around to that early war aspect of this kit because I did say that I was going to come back to it. And it's a bit of a double edged sword, you see, because whilst you get the cool, unique early war uniforms, the problem is, is that in gameplay terms, you're not going to get as many weapon options with this kit as you would say with the German Grenadiers. You see, Blitzkrieg German infantry only come with three weapon options, MP40s, rifles and MG34s. If you get a later war German kit, not only will you get all of those three options, you're also going to find yourself with MG42s, Panzerfausts and STG44s. And those last two are really, really big. Panzerfausts and STG44s are really, really powerful weapon options that are kind of like soft regiment traits, faction traits that you get for your German army. So the fact that this kit doesn't come with them means that, yeah, you'll be able to play early war and that's cool. But you're going to struggle if you want to play anything after early war. Like if you take this kit, this starter army into, let's say, a Russian starter army and they've got access to all of their mid-war and late-war gear, you're going to potentially struggle with this, certainly. So the Blitzkrieg German models are cool, but they're very limited in terms of weapon loadouts. In fact, per six models, in terms of the sprues that you get, you only get one MP40 and one MG34. If I remember like my winter Germans correctly, I had like three SDG44s, I had MP40s, I had MG42s, MG34s, Panzerfaust, I had all sorts of kit options. So this is very good at building an early war army, but it will be bad if you want to build any other kind of German army. And this sort of downside, this kind of like negative aspect that I'm talking about here is actually going to lead us into the next part of the video, which is comparing this starter set to some of the other starter sets. I'm going to be totally honest with you guys, unless you're really die hard early war World War II fan, I wouldn't actually recommend this as a starter set. And the reason for that is when you compare it to some of the other German starter armies. So firstly, this kit costs £106, which is fairly standard for a starter army. But if you compare that to, let's say, the Africa Corps Starter Army, which is only £89, I actually feel like you get as much stuff in the Africa Corps Starter Army as you do in the Blitzkrieg one, which is mad because the Africa Corps box set is £17 cheaper. So I'm going to bring up a picture of that box set now so you guys can get a good comparison. And you'll notice that it feels like you basically get the same amount of models in this thing, okay? So in the Africa Corps box set, you get 36 infantry, one vehicle, and three artillery pieces. Now, you get the same amount of infantry. You do get one less vehicle. You are lacking that transportation. But you get an extra war machine, which, in my opinion, makes up for it. It's the same number of units you're getting in this kit, okay? Now, the 36 infantry as well, I would argue that the Africa Corps infantry are better then the Blitzkrieg infantry, the kit is more modern as far as I am aware, and you get also more weapon options. Now, in terms of weapon options that you can give your squads, it's the same, okay? You get rifles, MG34s, and MP40. So, not much different there, to be honest. And you get the same number of MP40s and stuff as you do in the Blitzkrieg kit. What is different is you get also access to anti-tank rifles and light mortars, which means you can build an anti-tank rifle team and a light mortar team out of this kit. That's two more war machines, artillery pieces. So in a funny sort of way, you're getting 36 infantry, but you're in a funny sort of way, you're getting five artillery pieces from this because you get your extra anti-tank rifle team and you get your extra light mortar team. So there's a lot more weapon options that you get in that kit. Now, then when you look at the vehicle, the Panzer III is basically equivalent to the Panzer IV. I actually did a video on this and I'll link it at the end of this one. But the Panzer III and Panzer IV are very equal. So it comes down to the artillery and you get a flak 88 
in the Africa Corps set, which is really, really good. Now, some could argue that the light artillery of the Blitzkrieg Germans is better tactically, and I wouldn't necessarily argue against that. The Flatgate is a big beast, and it's kind of expensive. But at the same time, it's a goddamn Flak 88. It's really, really cool. And it's a very, very powerful artillery piece. It, anything that it hits, it pretty much takes a chunk out of. So it's really, really good. And then the fact that you both kits come with a medium mortar is great. But then the Africa Core one comes with that medium machine gun. It's just crazy. It's crazy. For me, I would argue that if I had to pick between the Africa Core starter set and the Blitzkrieg starter set, I'd probably go for the Africa Core one every single time. I really don't see where the extra £17 is coming from. Yeah, you might argue that Hannah Mag is worth more in sort of monetary value. The MMG team is worth like a tenner. The Hannah Mag is worth like £25. Yeah, okay, fine. I get that. But in terms of the worth on the tabletop of the models, how good the tabletop models are, I still think that the Africa Core starter army beats the Blitzkrieg one every single time. So for me, I think the Blitzkrieg one is good if you're starting an early starter army. And I think it's good for early war kind of stuff. And I would say that the Blitzkrieg expansion set, which I've not touched on here, is pretty cool. But just comparing this starter army to other starter armies, I think that I think that the Blitzkrieg one is kind of weak. And I don't think it's a great German starter army set. It's okay, but if you're not bothered about the time period, there's certainly better ones to go for. But that's it for today. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Do you agree with my assessment or do you disagree with the assessment? Is there anything that you think I've missed that would make a big difference? Put it down in the comment section below. And if you're watching this video and you're not sure, go and check out the comments. I'm sure there'll be loads of really helpful information down there. So massive thank you to everyone that's watched this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider giving it a like and subscribe and a comment and all that kind of good stuff. Any extra interactivity you can give this video gives it a big boost, which means more people will see it and hopefully this video will help more people out. So massive thank you to everyone that goes ahead and does that. If you've really enjoyed today's video and you want to see more content like this, then please consider becoming a channel member or Patreon supporter. It is thanks to my channel members and Patreons that I'm able to cover more game systems now. I don't just exclusively do Warhammer 40k, I do a lot of bot action content as well. If you're a bot action fan or you're a Warhammer 40k person that wants to see more about action stuff, please consider becoming a channel member and Patreon supporter. And I just want to take a moment to say a big thank you to the latest channel members and Patreons. So a huge thank you to AL Craft, Artremus Let's Play, Funny Creature, Lachlan Coles, Scott Gregory, Nick Smith, The Goggles They Do Nothing, Auto 15A, Trevor Lane, Joseph Wrigley, Guiana Carlo, Death to the Grey, Witch Hunter Guy, Moritz, Polaris Eternia, Lehman Russ, Lax Comics, and Joe Ken for becoming channel members. Thank you guys. I really appreciate all of the support. And I also want to take a moment to say thank you to our latest Patreon supporters as well. So massive thank you to Antonio Aguilera, DK126, Polaris, Jacob Holden, and The Major91. Thank you guys for going the extra mile and supporting me on Patreon. It's absolutely fantastic. Now, last but certainly not least, I want to take a moment to say a big thank you to my top tier Patreon supporters. These are the War Masters, the people that have gone above and beyond the Call of Duty, and their support is absolutely fundamental to the continue running of this channel. So, a big thank you to everyone who is a War Master, and a big shout out to Navy Veteran, Philip French, Ross Miller, Alex Stengal, John Stubbs, Nicholas Walsh. Swordfish Trombone, Diesel Fox, Tom Sutton, and August Varney. Thank you guys so much. Your ongoing support is, I know I say it all the time, but it's genuinely life-changing. So thank you so much. I hope everyone's enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. And of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time.